This is the Viaduct Tavern in the City of London. Nowadays it's a very busy, vibey area, but it used to be surrounded by slums and prisons. Think the film Oliver Twist and you'll get the general idea. Now though, this pub is one of the most haunted in London. The Viaduct is one of the last examples of an old Victorian gin palace left in the City of London and its garish interior was designed to look like an opera house. Back in the days of Charles Dickens, its clients would have been the poor working class of the capital, as the tavern was in a very disreputable area and right next door to two major prisons. Richard Jones is a world-renowned expert on Dickensian London and knows all about the infamous ghosts of the Viaduct Tavern. The Viaduct Tavern is incredibly haunted. Uh, most of the hauntings tend to happen down in the cellar and there's numerous landlords down in the cellar who've uh, had taps on the shoulder. One landlord had to go speak to him, say there's just us two down here now. The rooms upstairs are, are fairly haunted as well. In 1982, the landlord's daughter was left in charge one Sunday and she'd uh, closed up after the Sunday morning session. She'd gone upstairs, sat down on the sofa and was uh, reading the paper when suddenly she heard footsteps come racing up the stairs and the door opened, the paper was snatched from her hand, dropped to the floor, the door slammed shut and the footsteps went back down the stairs and she searched the pub and there was no sign of anybody. So it's down here, there's a lot of history and a lot of paranormal activity. If you just turn left through that doorway and head straight ahead. Through here? Through this one here. And this is where the oppression almost really hits you. Well, gee, it's cold down here. <laughs> we're um, experiencing the, uh, the effect of the cooling system for the beer. We're, we're in the pub cellar, but we're in a very historic site because we're sandwiched between the sites of two prisons. Over on this side used to be a debtor's prison called the Gillspur Street Compter. And over on this side, across the road from here, used to be one of the most infamous prisons in London's history, Newgate Prison. Why was it so infamous? Well, it's infamous because it's, uh, it's one of the oldest prisons in London, but conditions in there were absolutely horrific. And of course, um, people were in there for all sorts of felonies, murder, theft, children were in prison there, and people were actually executed in the square opposite uh, for, for over a hundred years. So it really is not just a historic spot, it's a spot with a very good, great deal of gruesome history. Thank you, thank you very much. Too, too kind. <laughs> Gee, it's dark and dingy down here, it's isn't it? Have you noticed the atmosphere has changed as well? It's Completely. Like and uh, we've left, we've well and truly left the 21st century behind here. I mean, this is what some of the cells would have been like in, in the prisons. I mean, don't forget, when you went into prison, you were really left, left to fate. Uh, you might be, have a little bit of money and be able to pay uh, for a bit of luxury, but a lot of people would have been fed. I mean, what some people claim is, for example, the holes here in the ceiling are where people used to walk by upstairs and the debtors would sort of push up against them, crying out for alms or money or even food. Food would be dropped down. And of course, a great pleasure of Londoners was to taunt the prisoners, so it wouldn't just be food that got dropped down on them through this. So if, they, if that was the case, it would have been a horrendous place to be. And certainly it's indicative of what several of the cells would have been like, certainly in the debtors' prison. And you can imagine what it would be like here in closed the darkness sort of encroaching around you. And you can imagine just the executions on the other side of the road taking place, and you'd listen to the crowds, the excited babble of the crowds, and they'd start arriving the night before an execution. And of course, uh, not, not just you, but the, the whole felons who are waiting to go to their deaths the next morning, they'd be here in their cells and they'd hear the crowd striking up with songs such as, oh my, think I'm gonna die, and uh, all sorts of songs like that. And then of course, just before eight, uh, the, the bell of St. Sepulchre's Church opposite would start tolling and they'd be brought out onto the scaffold and the noose would then be placed over their, their neck, the hood placed over their head, and they'd stand there in the darkness, the crowd all around them, and then at eight o'clock, that bell would start its final, its strokes eight, and on the final stroke of eight, the trap was pulled and you were plunged into eternity. Your last eight strokes of life. 
So that's the history. What about the hauntings? Well, this is an incredibly haunted spot. And uh, one of my favorite stories concerns a landlord here in the 1980s. And he was tidying up in this room. And the door was open, a light was on, and there he was tidying aptly away. And he turned and suddenly the light went out, the door slammed shut, and a voice from the corner snarled. It's just us two down here now. Oh my goodness, he must have been terrified. Well, needless to say, within a few moments, there was only it down here. He was back up in the bar having a brandy. <laughs> Where's the next one? It's this one over here, and uh, believe you me, this, this is where it all kicks off. After you this time. Thanks. This is where most paranormal activity is recorded, where people sense things, things happen to them, and also, it, to me, it's one of the most oppressive parts of the entire subterranean region down here. It's certainly very grim looking. It's horrible, isn't it? <laughs> so what's being experienced down here? Well, it, it's, this is a place where mediums are often overcome. Uh, mediums will come in here and they'll pick up on things. Uh, there are some faints, many become nauseous, and all agree there's a feeling of utter hopelessness and helplessness emanating from here. The other reason, of course, is that ghosts often appear where there are sources of water. You often find that where a ghost appears, there'll be an underground spring or an underground uh, brook or uh, underground stream. And oddly enough, just down here, there is just such an item. Because uh, this, this cell used to flood an awful lot. And uh, it was always a bit of a mystery as to why it should happen. Until they got a plumber in who made a discovery that down here, we have a water source. But it's... <laughs> oh my goodness. Is that a sewer? It's, well, it is now, and uh, it's actually a tributary of one of London's most infamous rivers, the River Fleet. So this could have a lot to do with why this is one of the most haunted parts of the pub. Well, I've certainly learned a lot about how horrific life was for thieves and murderers in jail before the 19th century. With so much despair, hopelessness and evil history surrounding the galleries of justice and the Viaduct Tavern here in London, it's not surprising that both are renowned for being haunted. See you next time. Bye-bye.